Testers have a clear mandate, validate the quality of an application, but there are many things that make meeting that mandate very challenging. Knowing what to test, finding a bug, communicating the issue to developers, and knowing what and when to verify that the bug has been fixed are all part of the challenge. Microsoft Visual Studio Test Professional 2010 is the answer to this challenge. Microsoft Visual Studio Test Professional 2010 is a powerful yet easy to use tool which enables teams to manage test plans, run tests, and file actionable bugs. These features are deeply integrated with the application lifecycle management solution in Visual Studio 2010 Team Foundation Server. But how does all of this make testers more efficient? At the core of Microsoft Visual Studio Test Professional 2010 is Microsoft Test Manager. This is the product we're looking at on the screen. Microsoft Test Manager allows testing teams to manage everything from entire test plans to individual test run results. It does not require Visual Studio, but instead plugs into Team Foundation Server 2010. This integrates the testing effort directly into the development process and provides for easy, efficient communication between developers and testers. Microsoft Test Manager helps teams meet the challenges of quality assurance with a wide range of new features. For example, as a tester, we can quickly see what user stories are in play in this particular iteration. More importantly, we can also see what user stories have not yet been tested. We can see that there is one user story that has no tests associated with it. This should never be the case. If there are active user stories in a given iteration, we should be testing them. We can link a test case to this user story. We already have a test case that addresses the registration scenario, so we just have to bind them together. This link tells the rest of our team how we will validate this particular user story. We've done some planning and organizing, now let's do some actual testing. Microsoft Test Manager gives testers a wide range of options for testing. Strict, regimented testing is certainly important, but so is exploring the application under test to find new kinds of bugs. Microsoft Test Manager supports this kind of exploratory testing equally as well. With an exploratory test case, we just have some general test steps. These steps are intended as guidance. The idea is for us to freely explore the application under test in a general area, looking for bugs. Let's try running an exploratory test case. Any effort we spend testing is valuable. Microsoft Test Manager ensures that the work we do exploring does not go to waste. As we are working our way through the Blue Yonder application, Microsoft Test Manager is actually recording all of our actions as we perform them. We can use these actions later on to build automated test cases if we want to. As we work through each step, we indicate whether we pass or fail. Our scenario is supposed to test for a new user registration. However, when we enter information for a new user and press the register button, we get an exception. This obviously looks like a bug, so we will log it. Since this is an exploratory test case, Microsoft Test Manager will only include the information as collected for us that matches the time range that we choose. For example, we might have just been poking around for the first few seconds, so we won't include that in the bug report. This enables us to explore the product as much as we want to, yet only include information that is relative to the bugs that we find. We will save our bug at this point so developers can begin their investigation. Everything is stored in Team Foundation Server 2010, so there's no need to transfer information or even send anyone an alert. It's all taken care of for us by Team Foundation Server. While our developers are investigating this bug, we can look at how we can leverage the work we have done so far. Some organizations shy away from doing too much exploratory testing because the effort cannot be reused. 
you spend an hour clicking through a product, it would be ideal if that hour could be leveraged by your team as well. Microsoft Test Manager enables you to do exactly that. For example, as we were working through the product, our actions were being recorded. This can be used to create test cases later on. Not even a single click is wasted. We started this demonstration by just following a few guiding steps in our exploratory testing. Now that we have run this test case once and found a bug, this test case is going to be a formal part of our test runs going forward. When we ran this test case the first time, we just made up some information to enter for the new user, the username, email, password, etc. Now let's evolve this test case a little bit and make it more sophisticated. We will turn the username, email, and password into parameters. Each time our test is run, a new set of data will be used for those parameters. We will just define two iterations, but we could easily define many more. Microsoft Test Manager helps make our whole team efficient by making sure no effort is wasted. Let's look at another example of how the exploratory work we did can be used. When we created our bug, we based it on a subset of the exploration that we did. We trimmed off the first part of our actions because they weren't pertinent to the bug. Now when the bug gets fixed, it would be great to have a test to verify that bug. We could easily create one using Microsoft Test Manager. Looking at our new test case, we can see that only the subset of actions we chose when we created the bug have been included in this test case. This is one more way we can become more efficient in our testing. Now let's assume the role of a developer. All this information is very helpful for determining exactly what the problem is. Because Microsoft Test Manager automatically captured so much information for us, there is no need for the usual back and forth between the developer and tester trying to figure out exactly what the problem is. If the description in the bug is not enough, developers can see a screenshot of a particular repro step. If screenshots are not enough, developers can play back a video recording of what the tester was doing. This helps developers understand nuances in what the tester was doing. Maybe it was something the tester was not even aware they were doing that reproduced the bug. Lastly, if developers want to know how the machine was configured, they can easily look at the system information that was automatically added to the bug. One of the most valuable pieces of information that is included automatically in a bug is the IntelliTrace log. An IntelliTrace log captures debugging information. It's like someone had a debugger attached to the system when the exception occurred. The log file enables the developer to play back that debugging session. IntelliTrace is particularly useful for web-based applications. We can see all of the worker threads that have handled the request in our application. The list of exceptions is usually a good place to start an investigation. When we drill into an IntelliTrace file, we put Visual Studio 2010 into debug mode. We can drill down right to the source of the exception. Let's not worry too much about how we are going to fix this bug. Let's just stop our debugging session now and assume that we will put in a fix. The great thing about IntelliTrace is that we can stop this debugging session and pick it up where we left off later on by just opening up the IntelliTrace log file again. Since we are going to make a code change, it would be ideal to have a regression test to go along with that fix. This is where the line between development and test blurs a little bit with Visual Studio 2010. We can leverage the recorded actions from our manual test earlier and turn them into an automated coded UI test. We just have to point Visual Studio Test Professional 2010 at the test case and it will generate automated test code for us. The effort we, or our tester, 
spent recording this test has been leveraged into an automated test case that we can use in a number of places. As a developer, before we check in our fix, it makes sense to run this test case to verify that fix. We can also include this test in our build verification test suite. And of course, this automated test case can be used by the testing team to quickly investigate any new builds. If this test passes, then it is worth the time to manually verify the fix as well. Let's assume that we have implemented a fix. Now we'll check in our work. As part of our check-in, we can associate our work with the bug that we are targeting. This will help everyone in our team, including our testers, know why we are making this change. We just simply check off the bug we were targeting and it will be resolved for us. Once our changes are checked in, a new team-wide build will be run. One of the new features in Visual Studio Test Professional 2010 is the notion of test impact. Visual Studio Test Professional 2010 will automatically calculate what tests should be run to address the new code that's been checked in. This is a very powerful feature that eliminates a lot of guesswork when it comes time to verifying bug fixes. That original test case started off as an exploration. It's now turned into a test that's run as part of the build. Okay, let's assume the role of a tester again. A healthy team produces a lot of builds, but it can be challenging to figure out what tests we should run. Microsoft Test Manager helps us narrow down what testing we should be doing with our own view of test impact. We have a new build available, so we will assign it to this test plan. Based on the tests that were affected in this build versus the previous build that we assigned to this plan, Microsoft Test Manager will recommend a set of tests for us to run. This takes the guesswork out of planning our test pass. This is another step towards efficiency. As testers, we can spend less time trying to plan our testing and more time actually doing testing. Once we have assigned a build to our test plan, we can easily see what bugs have been resolved and assigned back to us for verification. We can now verify this bug fix with our existing test case. Our test case has gotten much more sophisticated. Instead of making up the information for the new user, we can get it bound from the parameters in our test case. This means that anyone from our team can run this test case and still have the same effectiveness in terms of verifying the fix or finding more problems. But running this test case manually again is a little bit tedious. So we can do a quick sanity check and just run the recorded actions automatically. We used our recorded actions earlier to generate an automatic coded UI test. Now we are using that recording again to have Microsoft Test Manager automatically play back our manual test case for us. Microsoft Test Manager will run each step for us. This is a great way to quickly verify a bug fix and is just one more way for us to leverage our earlier effort. Our scenario passes this time, so the bug fix has been verified. Visual Studio Test Professional 2010 ensures that no one's efforts are lost. Visual Studio Test Professional 2010 ensures that testers and developers can leverage each other's work to ensure that they are building the highest quality software possible. Lastly, let's assume the role of a project manager. The Quality Dashboard aggregates data from a variety of sources and helps us determine when we are getting close to being ready to ship. We have seen a lot of products and features in this demonstration. The motivation behind everything we have seen today is to maximize test effectiveness and efficiency. Microsoft Test Manager, Visual Studio, and Team Foundation Server all work together to ensure that every bit of effort we spend testing, literally every click, is put to good use. That is going to make testers as effective and efficient as possible.